Hey everybody, welcome to another week of the Catholic Bible Study, where we are getting ready for Sunday Mass before Sunday Mass. Really simple, that's what it's all about. We'll, we'll look at all of the three of the readings coming up, including the psalm, I guess, so before, technically, if you count the psalm as a reading. Um, and uh, just just dive into the Word of God, because that's, that's the thing, is the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, scripture tells us that, in fact, and we believe that God wants to encounter us, and, and we, of course, want to encounter Him. Of course, in the Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, at, at Mass, but, but also in the proclamation of the Word. The Lord speaks to His people in this incredible way in the liturgy of the word and so that's that's what we're all about so with that let's let's dive in uh the 24th sunday in ordinary time and we'll dive in with our opening collect and then we will get into the first reading which comes from the book of sirach okay let's pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen look upon us O god creator and ruler of all things and that we may feel the working of your mercy grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, this is good. This, this is good. Look upon us, O God. So we're asking him just to look at us. Just, just like, give us a glance. And of course, we know that he does. You know, you know this, that, that if, if God ever, he holds us in existence all the time. So if he ever, like, stops thinking about us, we just disappear. We, it's like a blip. Um... And so, so we know that God is always looking upon us, but nonetheless, like, look upon us, creator and ruler of all things. He is the ruler of everything. We're going to actually look at this in the gospel passage, I believe. Uh, no, excuse me. We're going to look at this. We're going to look at the second reading, um, the, the ruler of all things. But that, and that, so in other words, in order that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. There's something about, there's something about when we serve God, that is, that is a, a sign for us that the Lord's mercy is at work inside of us. I think I think that's a really cool thing. You think about that because you know sometimes people will say, you know, I, I've repented of my sins, I've gone to confession, or or I, I I go to mass and I receive the Eucharist, or you know whatever it is, I encounter His, his grace, but I don't really feel like He's at work in my life. Well, we we can ask, um, are you serving God? Are you growing in service of God? If you are, even though you might not feel anything. If you're growing in service of God by giving more and more of your life to God, then actually that's a sign that the sacraments that he gives to us, the grace that he gives to us, are truly at work. His mercy is at work because we know that by, because of sin, we are now prone to stray from God rather than to go toward him. And, and so what he does is he comes and he gives us his grace to pull us back, to pull us back toward himself. And so if we are, in fact, going back toward him, toward him uh, by, by serving him, by loving him, by giving more of ourselves to him, then that's actually a sign, even if the, the feelings are not there, that's a sign that he's at work. His mercy is working on us and growing within us. That's, that's beautiful. So we're asking for that. Grant that we may serve you. Uh, and as we do this, we can say, like, okay, he's, he's granting this. Because by myself, I'm going to go this way. But he's granting me to come this way. So he's pulling me. He's drawing me to himself. Beautiful. Okay, the book of Sirach. So the book of Sirach, this is this is the thing. So if you pull out your Bible and you look for the book of Sirach, this is going to be one of the telltale signs whether you have a Catholic Bible or a, a non-Catholic Bible. Because our Protestant brothers and sisters, at the time of the Reformation, they decided to take the book of Sirach as well as six other books and to get rid of them. So the book of Sirach was, was a book that was in the Bible, that was in the, the scriptures uh, for, for, I mean, the early centuries of Christianity, they had to hash out, you know, which books were, were inspired and which ones were not inspired and, and sort of like, okay, wh what's going on here? And, and then, of course, that, that carried through. But then in, in the 1500s, when the Protestant Reformation took place, Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformers just wanted to get rid of these seven books. They didn't agree that they were inspired, and so they got rid of them. Um, there, there are only maybe a couple of books that are actually, I would say, con uh, consequential as far as, as what we believe. There are other books that they, they got rid of these among these seven that are just really good wisdom literature. And a person could, could believe this whether they believe that it's inspired or not inspired by God. Um, you, you, can, you can believe this. You could read it and be like, oh man, this, this is really good. Even if you don't believe that it's inspired word of God, you could still read it and be like, this, this is actually really good. Because what they do is they actually encourage us to pursue 
growth in our relationship with God, to pursue growth in terms of our religious fervor, in terms of our love of God's law. So I guess if you're not into following God's laws, then you wouldn't like these books, even if you think they're inspired or even if you think they're not inspired, you wouldn't like them. But but that's, that's ultimately what the book of Sirach is, is about. It was, it was written pretty pretty close to the time of Jesus in terms of, you know, like a, a century or two, something like that, uh, it seems like. Um, and it's just, that's it's what it is. It's encouraging us to follow the laws of God and to live godly and upright lives, uh, to, to hang on to religious zeal. That's what's going on. So we're in Sirach chapter 27, verse 30, which is the very last verse of chapter 27. And then we go into the first seven verses of 28, of chapter 28. So chapter 27, verse 30 through chapter 28, verse 7. So a total of eight verses altogether. So here we go. We will read it. Let's dive in. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherish, cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. Okay. There we go. I, I, th I think this is just, it's really, it's pretty st fairly straightforward, but there's also, I mean, there's a couple of things that are, that we're actually going to see play out even further in our gospel passage. Actually, when we look at the next video, when we look at the gospel passage, th there's a really, really good connection here. But even just like if you were to take this at face value, again, whether, whether you think it's inspired or not, of course, for us as Catholic Christians, we believe that it's inspired. We believe that God inspired the author of the book of Sirach. And, and for that matter, it's not just like we in the 21st century believe this. This, as I understand it, was one of a very popular books, one of the popular books among the earliest Christians. In fact, they, the book is, it hasn't always been called Sirach. It's been called Ecclesiasticus. Uh, so Ecclesiastes, so Ecclesia, the church, right? So it's, it's like one of the books of the church. Um, it's, it was a popular book because they just loved reading it because there's just really good instruction such as this wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them tight. Right? So do you want to be someone who's converted or someone who's not converted? To be, to be a, a saint, we could say a holy person, or do you want to be a sinner? Well, if you want to, if you want to be a holy person, you're not going to cling tightly to wrath and anger. That doesn't mean that you won't experience wrath or anger from time to time. But, but what it is to say is like, I, as soon as I feel these things, I'm, I'm going to let them go. I don't want to cling to them. I don't want to hug, hug them tightly. But instead, I, I want to let them go. Because why? Well, because the vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance. This, this desire to get back at somebody who, who does something wrong to you. This desire to punish those who are wicked, to have vengeance. Well, it says the Lord's vengeance will, suffer, will be suffered by those who are vengeful. In other words, he's saying, let the Lord figure it out. Let you don't you don't have to figure it out. But instead, what? Uh, um, forgive your neighbor's injustice, so that what? So that when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. This this sounds so familiar, right? Hopefully, it sounds like the Lord's prayer: Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against them. Jesus says, "Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy." So this is, this is the thing is rather than hang, hanging on to anger and vengeance, instead, how about you let those things go and you forgive, forgive injustice. It is truly injustice. So we're, we're not saying that, that an unjust, an unjust act was just, we're not saying that it's, it's fine, but what we are saying is like, no, this is for the Lord to deal with. The Lord will pay back everybody according to what they merit, according to their actions. Jesus talks about this as well. Uh, St. Paul talks about this as well. The, the, this, this is all throughout the scriptures. The Lord will have vengeance according to how he wants to have vengeance. And so let it be up to him. But but when you forgive, then what? Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. You're just like, Lord, I'm trying to be like you. In fact, we're going we're gonna to see this in our psalm response. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is merciful. And because the Lord is merciful, so too we want to be merciful. I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but we know that in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, the Lord reveals himself to Moses, and, and this is the line, the Lord, the Lord, kind and merciful, um, something like that. I, I should have looked it up. But anyway, he's, he's kind and he's merciful. He's compassionate to those uh, who fear him and to every generation. You know, like that kind of thing. Like, this is who the Lord is, and if this is who the Lord is, then that's who we are called to be, to strive to become like him. 
Um, okay, so anyway, so, you're, so could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? This is like we come to the Lord and we ask for favors, we ask for healing, we ask, for, but it's like, okay, well, if you're nourishing anger, how could you possibly expect healing? Because the Lord, he, his, there's, there's no room for, for him in your heart, in your soul. If you're just nourishing anger, you're allowing something else to grow inside of you rather than letting the Lord's grace grow inside of you. Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If you receive mercy to another person who is a sinner like you are, you, you can't possibly think that you're going to receive pardon for your sins if you're unwilling to, to pardon others' sins against you. And this is going to come through really strongly in the gospel passage when we get to it, but we just got to wait. If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? This, oh man, this word cherish. We, you know, like, I think we got to be honest with ourselves. Because I think if, if we ask ourselves, like, do you ever cherish wrath? And it's like, well, of course I don't cherish wrath. But but what does it mean to cherish it? Well, it means to, to guard it, to protect it. If someone encourages you to, to let it go, it's like, no, I cherish this thing. I'm not going to... You think of think of Smeagol uh, in the in the Lord of the Rings, the Gollum, uh, who's, who he does what? He's, he gets his ring and he's like, my precious, right? This is this is my thing. And I can't imagine letting it go. Or maybe, maybe I'll let someone else carry it, I guess, if I have to, but I'm not letting that thing out of my sight because I cherish it. This is my treasure, my precious. Sometimes with anger, it can be like that, or wrath, it can be like that, where it's like, no, I, I forgive that person, but I still, I'm still looking forward to the day when they get what they have coming to them. You know, like that kind of thing. It's like, I, maybe I say that I forgive them, but I'm keeping, my, I'm keeping them in my peripherals because I just can't wait to see them punished. And maybe I would never actually express that in my words, but, but if I can examine my heart, because ultimately the Lord looks into the heart. He sees not as man sees. He sees as God sees. He looks into the depths of the heart. And so if, if, I'm, if I'm honest with myself, Hopefully, hopefully, if I'm honest with myself, I truly have forgiven this person, which again, we're going to see again later on where it's, it's like, I've actually let this, let this, let it go. But if I am sort of watching them out of the peripheries, the, the peripherals, or if I'm just kind of keeping my eye on them, maybe I haven't let them go, let them go. I'm cherishing that wrath that I've been holding on to. Then the author says this, remember your last days, remember your last days. What's, what's going to happen in your last days? You're going to be judged. That's what's going to happen. Uh, there's, a, there's a phrase in, in the tradition um, uh, in Latin, memento mori, remember your death. Remember always that you will die. And when you die, you will be judged. And when you die, you won't be able to take anything with you that you have here here below. Let it let it all go, right? So uh, remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Like all of the enemies that you have, just, just set them aside because it's not worth it to hang on to these enemies. It's not worth it to hang on to this desire, this need for vengeance, this need for wrath. It's not worth it because the Lord wants to forgive you and, and, and he can only forgive you if you cease from sin, right? Uh, remember death and decay. Cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. St. Paul says this in our second reading last week, which he says what? The, the whole law is summed up in this one phrase, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If that's the whole law, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and then you want to say, uh, for, for love does no evil to the neighbor. Okay, well, hate not your neighbor. Remember the commandments. How do I love God? By following his commandments. One of his commandments from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, to love your neighbor as yourself. One of his commandments from Jesus Christ, who quotes Leviticus 19, love your neighbor as yourself. Of course, love God above all things, but love your neighbor as yourself. Remember the Most High's covenant. This, this is so important. Uh, his, it, the covenant that he establishes. Remember, God is so far. He's infinitely above us, he's saying. Uh, and he, he comes to us and he gives himself to us. And if God gives himself to us out of mercy, out of compassion, because that's who he is, then 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 let that be your response to the Lord, of course. But but if you let yourself be given to the Lord, that means you can't give yourself to anger and vengeance and wrath. You can't give yourself to a need to, to get back at those people, to, to hold on, to hug tightly to vengeance and wrath. You, you can't do it. Uh, and so remember the Lord's covenant. Overlook faults because because God has, has rescued you. He has saved you. He's, he's come to, to give himself to you as, as a bridegroom to the bride. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, our psalm response, as I said, so Psalm 103, which again is just a beautiful psalm of praise, but from verse 8, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. This, this is who he is. And, and so, of course, we, we want to be that way. Of course, to him, to love him, right? To bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. But then what? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are all the benefits that the Lord gives? Is the forgiveness of sins. It is compassion. It is mercy. It is grace so that I can be restored to relationship to him. 
And this is someone who's writing before Jesus even comes. So he's acknowledging his, his the, the benefits of the Lord. How much more for us as Christians, for us as Catholic Christians, should we recognize the benefits of the Lord who is so good and so merciful and he pours out his grace upon us even while we're still sinners, Jesus Christ dies for us. And, 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 and we don't want to forget that. But if we hang on to vengeance and anger, it's like we're forgetting the incredible mercy that he's shown. And so, so what? We have to remember, he pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. And so, so we, we want to we wanna be that way for other people. It's a beautiful psalm. So good. Oh man, this is this is so ah, it's good. It's challenging. It's challenging, absolutely. To forgive and to truly like say say to someone, you don't owe me anything. That's a challenging thing. And yet the Lord's mercy can do it for us. It can it can motivate us, it can inspire us, it can it can it can love from within us uh, to be that way. Beautiful. Okay, we'll see you for the next video. God bless you.